Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? I started to notice something. and I've been seeing it for a little while. But I've really started to notice it here lately. The people that used to mock and scoff when I would tell them, you know, we're, we're, we're coming into that time frame. This is what's going to happen at this time. And this is what's in the future and, you know, concerning the tribulation, the rapture, the end times, what the Lord's going to do. You know, the, all different su subjects involving that particular content over the years. And I've had the unique privilege of being able to talk to some of those same people at the same about the same subject now versus all those years ago. Those same people don't mock anymore, save one or two. They don't mock anymore. They don't balk at it anymore. They don't play it off anymore. Now they're quiet because now they're not sure. See, back then they were like, oh, everything is going to go on like it is, just like the Bible said they would. And some of these people are even believers. But now they're not so sure because now they're seeing the fruition of prophecy like it's never been seen before. And so now they don't say anything. Now they're very quiet and they kind of just halfway agree, uh, but they change the subject. They're not sure. They're scared. People on this earth are frightened because it seems more real now than it ever has in their lives. And here's what's really, really strange. Knowing that, seeing that the things you've been telling them all those years now suddenly are starting to come true. They still won't repent. They still won't change. They still won't get saved. Why? Satan has blinded them. It's part, it's part of prophecy. It has to happen that way. There has to be a falling away. There has to be. And unfortunately, it's going to involve a lot of people we know. But the Lord is going to bring them around. And bring them into salvation. So they will stand in heaven also. That's why we keep planting seeds. That's why we keep telling them these stories. That's why we keep telling them, this is what's coming. This is what's coming. This is what's coming. It was so funny because just last night I talked to somebody about that and they used to kind of blow it off and now they're not sure and so they're getting very quiet when I talk about those things. Before they would change the subject and now they're not. Now they're listening. But it may be too late. I don't know. This is why you put everything in the Lord's hands. Everything. Every big decision you have to make, I mean, take counsel from the Lord. Put it in his hands. If you don't know about this person, that person, put it in his hands. He'll deal with it. And he deals with it perfectly. That was a little off topic. But not really, because in Acts 5.31, and we just did the uh, Acts playlist, him hath God exalted, him being Jesus Christ. If Christ is exalted... All those that are his will be in the boat that we're in now. And all those that are on the other side of the door, the other side of the threshold, will be in the other position. The world is going to be convicted of the truth. They don't know that it's already happening. But that apostasy, it must happen. It has to happen first. Second Thessalonians 2 says this very clearly. It has to happen. So it should be no surprise to us, even if it's concerning or even if it's sorrowful, it should be no surprise to us that it's happening. Don't be surprised if somebody you thought was secure in the Lord suddenly goes a different direction. It's, ha it's happening. What we do is we keep ourselves in the faith. The Bible says keep yourself in the faith. Don't, don't focus on keeping somebody else in there. They've got to make their own decision. You keep yourself in the faith. It seems selfish, but if I can't stay in the faith, how can I possibly help someone else stay in the faith? So I have to stay in the faith. I have to make sure that I'm standing where I should be. I have to be wary and watchful, just like the Bible says. By doing that, I become a guidepost and a waypoint for those who are trying to find their way back. And it may be that you can reach your hand out and grab another and pull them in at the last minute. That brings us to morning devotional and prayer. This is for April 22nd, which is today. Him hath God exalted, Acts 5.31. Let's go read Acts 5.31. Where's my Bible? I can go. There we go. Acts 
531. All right. Let's go up a couple of verses. And when they brought them, they set them before the council, verse 27. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in, his, in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Oh, his blood was already on you guys. <laughs> verse 29, But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Now, the reason why Peter used those words was to remind them of the scripture and the prophecy about this. Isaiah 53. Verse 31, him hath God exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Peter worded that just like that for the purpose of convicting them and reminding them. Verse 32, and we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God hath given to those who obey him. Their response, verse 33, when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. See, those men knew the scriptures. They're talking to Pharisees. They knew the scriptures. They knew exactly what they were talking about. They just didn't want it to be Jesus. Because in their mind, they wanted Jesus to come and to take rule back from everyone else and give it to them only. And so the Gentiles would be slaves to them. That's what they had been indoctrinated to. That's what's in the Talmud. Then one in the council stood up, verse 34, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law. This man knew what they were saying, held in respect by all the people, and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Theudas rose up, claiming to be somebody, a number of men. About 400 joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But it, it, if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. I think he realized what Peter said, and it convicted him. He was like, whoa, wait a minute. We're about to make a massive mistake, and he's warning them. Verse 40, and they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. He knew. He knew what was happening. He, the Peter's words called to mind the prophecies and the scriptures that all these men knew. And it, it convicted him enough that he had to go, whoa, hold on, fellas. We need to think about this. We're about to get, we might be about to make a bad mistake. Obviously, they didn't take a good enough counsel into his words, or maybe he even didn't take too much, but it sure, sure changed the situation. I think if he hadn't spoke right then, they probably would have killed the apostles right there. Him hath God exalted. Jesus, our Lord, once crucified, dead and buried, now sits upon the throne of glory. The highest place that heaven affords in his, is his by undisputed right. It is sweet to remember that the exaltation of Christ in heaven is a representative exaltation. He is exalted at the Father's right hand. <coughs> and though as Jehovah... He had eminent glories, in which finite creatures cannot share. Think about this. Yet as the mediator, the honors which Jesus wears in heaven are the heritage of all the saints. It is delightful to reflect how close is Christ's union with his people. We are actually one with him. We are members of his body, and his exaltation is our exaltation. He will give us to sit upon his throne even as he has overcome and is set down with his father on his throne. Remember what the Bible says that, you know, at the moment of salvation, we're already seated in heavenly places. That's because Jesus is seated in heavenly places. We're already glorified. 
because Jesus is glorified. The moment Jesus entered heaven and sat down next to the Father, we entered heaven and sat down next to the Father spiritually. The day of redemption is redeeming us physically, with which we cannot go to heaven without having a changed form. We will inhabit that changed form and that will go to heaven with us. Because the current flesh and blood that we dwell in cannot inherit heaven. Body says that the, the scripture says that quite clearly. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. We must be in a new form. So, but right now, spiritually, we're in heaven. It's hard to grasp. It's hard to understand. But the more you read these scriptures, the more you realize it's the truth because our Lord is there already. He's holding a place for us. Um, he will give us to sit upon his throne, even as he has overcome and is set down with his father on his throne. He has a crown, and he gives us crowns too. He has a throne, but he is not content with having a throne to himself. On his right hand, there must be his queen, arrayed in gold of Ophir. That's the bride. That's the church. He cannot be glorified without his bride. Look up, believer, to Jesus now. Let the eye of your faith behold him with many crowns upon his head. And remember that you will one day be like him. When you shall see him as he is, you shall not be so great as he is, you shall not be so divine, but still you shall, in a measure, share the same honors and enjoy the same happiness and the same dignity which he possesses. Be content to live unknown for a little while and to walk your weary way through the fields of poverty or up the hills of affliction or by and by. For by and by you shall reign with Christ, for he has made us kings and priests unto God, and we shall reign forever and ever. Oh, wonderful thought for the children of God. We have Christ for our glorious representative in heaven's courts now, and soon he will come and receive us to himself, to be with him there, to behold his glory, and to share his joy. Didn't know this was going to be about the rapture, huh? And I didn't either because I didn't read ahead. That's awesome. And it's true. If we are a part of the Lord, members of his body, if we take all those scriptures that he just quoted from here, and you go through and look at this wording and go and search those scriptures out, you can put all those verses together. And it, it gives this whole speech. He's literally quoting the entire Bible the whole time. You see that it's true. The moment of salvation puts us in that heavenly dwelling, in that heavenly place. Now, there's still the, the, the situation of our flesh that has to be dealt with. But that's what the, the life of sanctification is. He is preparing us for heaven. You are two beings right now. You are a spiritual being and a physical being. The spiritual having being, being separated out, protected and shielded by the Holy Spirit, dwells in heavenly places. The Holy Spirit is within us, securing us. The flesh has to be changed next, and that's on the day of redemption, because when you redeem something, do you not take a physical coupon into the store to redeem it? Hello? So that physical form has to be redeemed, and it will be. And then we will physically stand in heaven and see him as he is. So many people have spiritualized this to the point that they don't even believe they're ever going to see heaven. Well, then why did he say you're going to see heaven? They don't ever believe that they're going to see the Lord physically. Then why did he say you would see him physically? See, they speak from ignorance because they don't want this to be true because it's too terrifyingly wonderful for them to behold. Whereas those of us who have nothing left to hold on to, hold on to this like it is everything in the world and of the highest value. I long to see the Lord. So did all those, and so do all those who believe, truly believe, long to see him. I long to see him. How many people call themselves Christians yet still stand on this earth and say, ah, I just want to be richer. I just want to do better. I just want to be able to have all these wonderful things. I tell you of a certainty. There are some of those men some of those women in those positions that would happily throw it all away. They're stuck where they are. They haven't gotten to the place where they're ready to escape. But they would happily throw it away to stand with the Lord in a white robe only, just to be in his presence. 
because they've realized the mistake that's been made. Generation after generation has revealed the true intent of the heart of man, not to serve the Lord, not to stand in his presence or to look unto him, but themselves. The evangelical movement is horribly corrupted with that. So many other weird ways of thinking in AR, uh, what the ARC, so many more of these organizations that they've identified themselves with the world and their false idols. The Bible says they're going to take their idols out of their pocket and throw them on the ground when the tribulation comes because they're going to realize this meant nothing and did nothing for me. Well, what idols do people carry in their pockets? Money. Over and over and over again, I see more and more, and this is concerning to me, more and more, and people are doing this. More and more and more. Glenn Beck does it, and Charlie Kirk now does it. I'm about to just unsubscribe from his channel. Invest in gold, invest in gold, invest in gold. Well, I want to tell you something. The only way an investment gains money is if the stock market is working. If the stock market collapses, and the Bible predicts that will happen in the seals, it will completely drop out to nothing. There will be no value to such things because you have to have a stock market to raise the value. And when nobody has food and water, I guarantee you food and water will become far more valuable than gold. So why would I invest in something that I know is going to devalue to the point it is worthless? Gold as a metal doesn't even make good wire. It's pretty much useless. Silver, you can use silver. Silver uh, makes good bullets. Silver makes um, a good coating for, um, for things. But unless you mix antimony with it, unless you put some tin in there or something when you melt it down, it's not hard enough to do much with. And it corrodes. Why would I invest in something that I know is going to go away? Why would I waste my time and my money putting it in something that I know is going to become nothing? Instead, we do what the Lord said. Buy gold from me. But from me, you get the gold that never tarnishes, that never goes away, that never disappears. Don't invest in the world. Invest in me. More and more the movement to prep. Prep up. Got to prep up. Why? What are you prepping for? Well, it, things ain't get bad. No, things are going to get bad. What are you hoping to survive? Well, you know, we got to watch out for each other and everything. Yeah, but there's other ways to do that. And you know the Lord will provide. If I believe he's going to provide, I'm not going to be so foolish and selfish as to think I'm going to survive a situation he might be removing me from in the first place. And no matter how much prepping you do, that's not going to save your life. But we've been taught this. What I show you guys, and I have a playlist talking about this stuff. For anybody who's new, I have a playlist that, that talks about the right way to do it. Three to six months. And that's all. That's all you need. But what are they telling people? Build up, save up, prep. Be ready. Ready for what? And I ask them, anytime I run into somebody like that, I ask them, ready for what? Because then that forces them to either say, well, ready for the tribulation or ready for the hard times. Okay? Well, what we do normally prepares us for those things, but we recover and we go on. No, but it's going to be extended because they're going to make us like, oh. Are you talking about, you know, that it might be going into the tribulation? Is that what you're really talking about? Is that what you're really preparing for? So you don't believe there's a pre trip rapture? Oh, no, I believe it. Then why are you prepping for the advent of it not happening? Well, it'll be here for people that know. The Bible says everything is going to be destroyed. How are they going to get it? Fire, tidal waves, earthquakes, everything is... Why would they hide in the rocks and the mountains if they could go hide in buildings? Well, maybe they can't because the buildings are gone. Maybe everything's gone. Maybe it's such a shock to them because the economy has collapsed. Everything's war. Everybody's fighting. I mean, I get, I, guys, I'm telling you, they're probably going to launch nukes. So most of your major cities are gone. There's not going to be any place to hide. But that's what they're teaching people. Instead of teaching them to have faith. Well, you can have faith and then you, you do prudent planning. The Lord wants you to step up, you know, to help yourself. Well, 
technically that's not the Bible. What he wants us to do is take counsel from him. What does he want us to do? Now, it may be he's leading some of these people to do this. And maybe he has put it on their heart to do this, but I don't think it's going to be for them. If anything, it's going to be for someone else who did walk in faith. And it may be that they're one of the first ones who gets taken out or locked up and all that stuff is left sitting there. And so he'll bring other people there to take it. The fact of the matter is, we're not to lay up for the day of the Lord. There's even a woe, a, a condemnation for those who long for the day of the Lord. There are some people who wish that everything would fall apart so they could prove to themselves that they can survive. Well, you want to prove it to yourself, go do it. Go move out to the mountains and don't tell nobody and go live and survive. It's a whole lot different to try to survive off the land when you've got people chasing you trying to find you and they will find you everything has trackers in it they can hunt you down and I've talked to many of them and told them so you know you, you filmed on a camera yeah yeah they can't track the camera well maybe but what did you upload it to YouTube yeah okay that means you have a laptop in your house yeah there's trackers in your laptop you not you're not so foolish to think that they don't have RFID um, transmitters within that oh I tell you they do vehicle computers have RFID transmit transmitters in them some of our clothing has it in them every cell phone has it hello Google Maps why do you think they phased out Tom Tom and Magellan wasn't because they weren't good I still have mine they work just fine, but you have to plug them into a computer to update the maps. It's not real-time updating, which means it's not connected to the network. They can't track that, but your cell phone they can, because it's on all the time. And your GPS is on all the time. Why, how do you find restaurants in that? Give us your location, and we'll show you the best route. Show us where you are. Allow us to see your location so we can show you where the restaurants are near you. They know where you are every minute of every day. As long as you have that phone in your pocket, as long as you have that tracker. You know, they put RFID chips in the shoes and the hems of your clothing. Go check some of your really nice clothing, especially if it comes from other countries. And go and start checking and you'll find a little tiny little, little, tiny little grain of sand in, this, in that hem. That's a RFID tracker. It's no secret. One of the most important things that we can do right now is have faith in the Lord and have faith in his word. Look at the world around us and say, okay, I see this. And my flesh says, I need to do something. But before I make a move, I'm going to take counsel from the Lord first. Lord, what do you want me to do? Because I don't want to act outside of your counsel. I want to do what your counsel says because I know that will work out perfectly for me and for those around me. We are watching for the rapture of the church. We know the time is now. The, all, all the signs and prophecies point to right now. So I'm going to take counsel with the Lord. Lord, what do you want me to do? Now, I have a video coming up here, hopefully in a couple of days, where I can show you an example of that. Because I'm, I'm going to, I, need, I need the visuals example here, and it's not here yet. So I can show you guys that. But I, I'm going to go over Scripture in that to, to point out the providence of God and how we are to wait on Him. Because when we wait on Him, it's better. Don't let the world tell you how to be ready for the Lord. Let the Lord tell you. Because he tells us in right here in this morning devotional how to be ready for him. Tells us how to be prepared. How were those apostles in Acts 5 prepared? They had the word of God. And because they showed that level of faith, God delivered them by convicting one of the Pharisees. 
Hey, remember that scripture? Yeah, that's what he's quoting. Uh, uh, fellas, hey, hold on a second. <laughs> Let's go over here and have a talk. If we mess with these guys, we might be putting ourselves in a real bad spot. Remember them other dudes? Yeah. Uh, if these guys are the same, it'll go. It'll be gone. No, don't worry about it. But uh, yeah, we need to uh, we need to be careful where we tread here. And the apostles, all they had to do is walk in faith. That's all we have to do: walk in faith, walk in faith, and believe it. He will lead us. Be conscious of the Spirit working in your heart, and. At the moment, whenever something comes up, and it's like, no, 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 well, wait a minute. Okay, well, I'm, I feel like this is, I'm being very drawn to this. this is, okay, uh, all right, I'm down. And then you move, and then you act. Pray. Ask him. You go in the Bible, and you look, how did they prepare? They prepared accordingly. A lot of people want to go back to Joseph, and whenever they had stored up all that grain that was in the, uh, uh, for the five-year famine. And like, see, see. Okay, well, you're taking that out of context because that was for multiple nations. Of course they stored up. And they sold all that grain and helped those people be able to make it. Our situation is way different than that. See, there was an end to their famine. There's no end to coming to this one except for the millennial reign. And then at that point, everything changes anyway. So we have to be prudent. We have to listen to the word and pay attention to what he's saying. If you're caught up in that movement of, of prepping and storing all this stuff up, stop. Calculate out what three to six months would be for your, your stuff, and then that's what you hold on to. I don't even have that. Because I know the Lord's going to provide everything. And it's not that I don't think about, okay, well, what if a disaster happens? I have that set up. Because we've had times here where we've been flooded in and haven't been able to get out for a week. We've had times here where the, the weather's been so much that it's shut a lot of stuff down. And so we prepare accordingly. And we're, we're, we're set up for just what we need. And I'm not going to go past that. And every time my wife gets concerned about something, she's learned not to because she's realize, you know, what the right way is. I tell her, whoa, whoa, hold on. In the past, yes. Now, no. What good is it going to do us if we're not even here? If we are going to say we walk in faith, let us walk in faith. Let us, let uh, other people see us walk in faith. Because the elderly couple down the street, they can't store up stuff. Those poor, those two kids that are starting their lives out as husband and wife and have no money or are struggling, they can't store stuff up. What about them? Prepping is a, a selfish event and a selfish tactic because if I lay all that stuff up and then I go buy a bunch of guns and ammo, what am I going to kill everybody that comes asking for food? That's not godly. What should we be doing? If we're going to do something like that, be ready to give the food away. Because people are going to come looking because not everybody can do it. I say, give your money to the poor. Go find a soup kitchen or a pantry or a women's shelter. Give your money to the poor. Give your money to the people that really need it. And solve their right now need. Because the Lord will take care of the future needs. That's what his word says. Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. Help the poor. I'll be fine. And if I miss a couple meals, so what? I need to fast more anyway. <laughs> Don't get caught in that trap, guys, because what it's going to do is it's going to cause you to be very frustrated. And it's going to cause you to be more concerned. And it's going to cause you to fear. Because you'll never, you'll realize you never have enough. Ever, ever, ever. And there's always some new thing they're selling. Well, you better buy this. Well, you better buy that. You know how many people have garbage like that stuffed in their garages and they never use? And they're never going to use. <coughs> because they buy it, but nobody ever teaches them. Go out there once a week and fire the thing up. I got a buddy that bought a $500 generator. Check out my generator, man. Hey, that's nice. 
Hey, a piece of advice. Buy an extra spark plug. Buy extra oil to do oil changes on it. And buy some Stabil fuel treatment for it and double mix a can of gas with a double shot of that in there. And every week come outside and start it up and let it run for 10 minutes. What's that going to do? It's going to keep it working good. Because if you stick it in the shed and leave it like that, the condensation is going to eat everything up. And whenever you need it, it's not going to work. You know how many people on the day the power goes out hard are going to go out there and try to use their stuff and it's not going to work? Prepping is more than just buying a bunch of stuff and shoving it in a corner. You have to know how to maintain this stuff real time. Most people don't. They buy it thinking they're good. How horrible would it be for you to store up a whole bunch of different kinds of stuff and have it sitting in the corner and never look at it. Two years later, something happens and you need it and you go in there and realize the rats have eaten their way into the containers and have destroyed it all. See, there's a whole lot more to this than what they're telling you. And they won't share with you the finer points of these things. I know how to do this stuff. I know what you're supposed to do with these things. And I don't do it. I don't do it not because I lack faith, but because I lack fear. And I know it's not going to do any good anyway. Let us look to our Lord. Let us look to Him for the counsel. Look to Him with our faith. Because... Like this morning devotion says, we're standing in his presence. When you go stand before the Lord, you take nothing with you. Nothing at all. If you're unsure about these types of things, ask him. Ask him and wait on the answer. I got an, I got an example coming, but I'm going to show you guys what praying and waiting for the answer looks like. A real-time example in my life. Pray and wait for the answer. Wait for his counsel because he will put things together in a series of events that will lead you to that providence. I know, just it literally just happened to me. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, we thank you for this wonderful word and we really thank you for these uh, devotionals. These are amazing. I didn't know this app had this. This is incredible. Father, make us to not fear. We are looking for our Lord, but it's impossible for me to sit and look for my Lord when I'm constantly fearing that I need to save this and put that back and store that up for the day of wrath. And you told us not to do that. Woe to the person who does that. Father, there, there's a horrible idea going around the world, and, and especially in Christendom, about we need to be focused on these things but not focused on you and watching for you and you said quite clearly blessed is the man who when the lord comes finds so doing the thing that he gave that person to do and what are people doing the opposite make us to walk in faith so that the promises that you gave we believe them and when things get bad and they will get bad that we will walk in faith because we'll know our lord's got this all we have to do is believe and hold on and wait for him. You're worth waiting for because when you bring the providence, it's that much greater. What we have people doing today is using your name as a selling tool and a marketing tool for their stuff. And they're making millions on worthless garbage. Most of it doesn't even work anyway. Some of the food they're selling is woof. You taught us a different way, Father. You taught us instead to have faith and walk in faith. Let the world see you walk in faith and watch. Watch, watch, watch. Because you don't know when he's coming. What are they doing instead? Everything the opposite of that. And yet again, they've laid out more dates and been wrong again. 
They try to word it so it ex absolves them from the responsibility of it, yet they're still responsible. How many people have these men driven from faith by saying these things? How many people have they caused to be offended by saying these things? And if they would just read your Bible and listen to it instead of changing it, they would know this. Father, make us to listen to your word and to be doers of it. To see our Lord in his glory in this word right here. And then to say, that's what I want. And then walk accordingly. That leads that narrow path to that. Uh, truly, this Bible is the narrow path. The narrow gate. Because so many people deviate from it so often that they miss the path and miss the gate. Make us to stay on this path. In this word only. And to read it for what it says and accept it. And move forward in the knowledge of the word. Your word, your wonderful word, which we give thanks for again this morning. Make us to watch. Watch the way you intended us to watch. Watching in faith. Because there's nothing better. We don't need to save up food. Your word is food. It is food indeed. How many times do the apostles tell the Lord, Lord, eat. I have food that you don't know about. And he was always talking about your word, your word that feeds us. And it does. Quite substantially. A lot of people don't realize that, but if you take it into your spirit, it's going to feed your flesh too. It's pretty awesome. Lord, make us to walk in faith. In these times now, with, with so much hinging on just a, a moment or an event that would cause people to stumble. Make us to stand firm on the foundation of faith, on the foundation of our Lord Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, the foundation of the apostles. Because while the rest of the world is running around losing their mind, we're still building. Building on that temple, building on our most holy faith. So we thank you, Father, for strengthening us, for making us to continue, for while we're still here, helping us to show the world what the right way is. And I pray for more of those opportunities. We can show them the right way to walk in faith and to stand in your presence and wait on you and to look for our Lord Jesus Christ to come because we know that time's about to happen. Very, very close. Father, thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you that you sent your Son, our Lord, our Messiah, to come die for us. In his name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for daily prayer. It's pretty simple. Do you believe or not? It comes down to that, that one question. And if you believe, how are you going to conduct yourself in that faith? How do we know what to do? Go to the Bible and read what the Bible says. Look at everything that the Bible says. Search it to find the answers to our questions. And if we don't like the answer, well, that's too bad. Because if we go by what that says, then we know we will be successful in everything else. All we have to do is believe and acknowledge. Be a doer of the word and everything will work out just fine. And they're going to make fun of us. They're going to laugh at us. But that laughing will stop when they see the reality of the situation. Because when we're gone, nobody is going to be laughing. When the rapture happens and the world changes, nobody is going to be laughing. They're going to be too busy running. Because the reality of all this is going to come full circle for everyone. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.